Hi, good morning, church. I'm so glad to be able to meet you, with you again to worship. Shalom to everyone. And I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to be able to go back to church next week to worship, to to gather together in fellowship, and just be in the Lord's place together. And we don't want to take that for granted. We want to thank the Lord. The government for 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 keeping us Singapore safe, and as well as the team for being so supportive as well. So, would you like to join me this morning to just thank the Lord? Just thank the Lord for all the works that He has done. Thank the Lord for our leadership, our governance, and even the pastoral stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Father, nothing beats being with you. Nothing beats being able to gather as a church to worship your name. No matter where we are at, physically or via Zoom, Father, I pray you be enthroned. You be enthroned in our lives every single day. And Father, even as we set aside this time to worship you, may you take delight in our worship. In Jesus' name, we pray. Good morning, church, and join me together in this song, Hallelujah to the Lamb. We just want to sing Hallelujah to the Lord because He is so good and His love just endures forever. Amen. And everybody on this earth and on this world will sing about how great He is. Lord, we stand in the midst of Your presence. Of those from every tribe and tongue, we are your people, redeemed by your blood, purchased from death by your love. 
understand every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. That's right, Father, we praise you in every circumstance, in every tribe, every people. We get to sing how great and marvelous you are because, Lord, you are who you are. And we can depend on you as the constant in every single thing that we go through. We just want to be with you. Every day of our lives, just to be with you. To rest in your presence. Because we know that's where we can find. Just in your presence, feasting. Out. 
at your tables, surrounded by your glory and yeah, your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just wanna be. I just want. Feasting at your tables, surrounded by your glory, and in your presence, that's where I always want to be. I just wanna be. I just wanna be. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. These months have been periods of waiting for many. Perhaps you've been waiting for the news of an approved COVID-19 vaccine, or for the green light to travel again, or for the news from your job hunt, for graduation, or for the allowance for greater social gathering numbers, or even for physical church service to start again. Yes, these are important events that we really want to wait for. But I want to tell you that the greatest event and the most important one that you should be waiting for is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is coming back again. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 to 44 says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But you know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Keep watch and be prepared. Jesus is returning and it will be at an unexpected time. Just like in the days of Noah, the people then were still drinking and eating, marrying and giving in marriage. Not that there is any issue with all these activities, but the problem was that they were lost in these activities and they forgot what was coming until they could not react and the flood came and swept them all away. We must not be like them, too wrapped up in these earthly activities or be lost in the earthly grind or the worldly pursuits or even pleasures. We must be keep watch and be prepared for the coming of our King, which is the greatest event that you can ever wait for. We cannot be presumptuous. Two men can be in the field, or two women can be doing the same job, but one will be taken and the other left behind. We want to keep watch and be alert for the most important event in history, which is the coming of our God once again. Jesus says this in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 to 15. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. 
I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Jesus is coming quickly. There are signs of His coming and the end of the age. We are not to be troubled by them. There will be rumours of war and sounds of wars, nation against nation, political entities rising against each other. Do not be alarmed by all these sounds. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes, these must come. And the Bible tells us these are the beginning of birth pains. Persecution and hatred for those who bear Christ's name, increased offences and betrayers, false prophets and increased lawlessness. These trials will increase. In spite of this, do not let your love grow cold. Don't abandon your first love. Keep your first love. Love requires courage, perseverance and long-suffering. These signs, these divine oracles may apply to more than one historical situation. And perhaps you will know of his events in history that will fit these signs. Yet with each sign, as you see all this occurring, do not be indifferent. But know that with each occurrence, we are getting closer to the return of our King. We are closer to the end of each and God has been moving in history and His plans is being carried forward and we are closer and closer to His return. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to keep watch and be prepared for our King's return. Like above pangs, these signs will become more and more regular, more and more intense. As there will be, and there will be a great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the earth, nor shall there ever be anything like that that will happen. But praise be to God in spite of all the tribulation and the trials that will come, because of His mercy and grace, the, the, the length of these days, the, the length of these trials will be shortened. The great tribulation, the length of it will be shortened because of God's love and mercy for us. In Matthew 24 verse 22 says, And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. There will be false Christ and false prophets. The Word of God tells us, do not be deceived. And how do we prepare ourselves? We need to arm ourselves with the Word of God. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to take time to read God's Word, to understand, to remember, to memorize, so that this, the Word of God will keep you steadfast through different seasons and different situations in life. The Word of God tells us that the second coming of Jesus will be known by all. Matthew 24, 27-28 tells us, For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. The coming back of our God will be known th throughout. There is no way to hide His news. And the thing is, is when He comes, it tells us that the, the age of the old will soon be over and He is ushering in the new age, the coming of the glorious imperishable kingdom, His kingdom. And we want to look forward to that greatest event. After the great tribulation, we know that there will be such a shaking in the heavenly bodies. And when these things occur, you know that Christ is coming back very quickly. Matthew 24, 30-31 tells us that the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and that all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. The sounding of a great trumpet Reminding the sound of a shofar, you know, in the Jewish, according to the Jewish calendar, the shofar is blown during the Jewish high holy days 
on New Year, as in the Trump, the Feast of the Trumpets, and at the end of Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. The Day of Judgment is also announced by blast of the shofar, according to Judaism. The sounding of the trumpet has great significance. Watch out for them. The fig tree in Matthew 24, 32 is often taken to represent the Jewish people, which can mean that when the hearts of the Jewish people are soft and tender and begin to grow signs, have signs of growth towards the Word of God, then you know that the time of the coming of Jesus Christ is very soon, is near. The generation of people who descend from the Jewish roots will definitely persist as a people until Jesus' second coming. God himself will ensure that there will always be a remnant of his people for himself. God's word stands true. Keep watch and be prepared for his coming. One that marks the most the end of the old age, the passing of the decay, giving way to his glorious imperishable kingdom. Like a woman going through labor, yes, the birth pangs, the contractions will bring much pain and it will get more intense and it will be difficult. But she looks forward to the birth of the child. She looks forward to the, time, the joy of, received, of seeing her, her child. And when the child is born, all the, all the joy of it supersedes all the pain that she has gone through. And this is how we are going to look forward to the return of our king. Matthew 24, 13 to 14 tells us, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. With technology and internet, the means to communicate between different groups of people across lands and languages have been greatly increased. I believe we are seeing nearer and nearer the gospel being preached to the ends of the world. You need to be part of God's kingdom to advance the gospel. You need to be part of God's kingdom force to share of his return. And who is this king of kings and who is this lord of lords? Keep watch and be prepared cause for faithfulness. To have faith in God's word and to be faithful in living out his commands. We need to live faithfully in the hope of God fulfilling, fulfilling all the promises that He's written in the Bible. We must live in the hope of Jesus' second coming. That is the greatest hope and greatest joy and greatest event in your life that you and I need to look out to. Noah faithfully built the ark over 120 years. And all this time, the people around him continued their daily activities and continue in indulgence in their lifestyle and continue to rebel against God's word. But time will tell that the word of God stands true. The people could view Noah as a fool, see, treat him with contempt. But Noah stayed faithful to God's commands and he preached to the world through his lifestyle, through his deeds. How are you and I to keep watch and be prepared? From the parable of the faithful and wise servant in Matthew 24, verse 45 to 41. Be like the faithful and wise servant. Whom has God given you charge of? The parable talks about a master asking and checking that the servant has been faithfully giving food to his fellow servants. Who are those that God has called you to look after? From your house, your family, your spiritual household, at your workplace, in school, your friends and your relatives? Whom has God given you spheres of influence over? You have the seeds of the gospel, you have the word of the eternal life, you have the truth. And we need to share with them, we need to sow these seeds, we need to share so that other people get to know about God. In this time of waiting, not to mistreat others, the rest of the stewards, the rest of the servants, neither to mistreat nor to self-indulge or be lost in the endless online entertainment that the world is calling you to be lost in. No, we need to keep watch and be alert for the coming back of our King. When we are stewards accountable for God's great commission, he, the Word of God tells us that He will entrust you with heavenly, eternal possessions 
possessions that will last throughout the and they will not they will go beyond time much more than what this world can offer you how can you keep watch and be prepared the parable of the ten virgins tells us keep watch and be ready for the wedding of the lamb the five foolish ones had lamps but without extra oil the five wise ones had spare bottles of oil that they kept with them they were all waiting, and during the wait, they can, they can become drowsy and fall asleep. But the thing is this, are you ready for the long haul? The core of God, discipleship is a long-time commitment. It is not just for the initial excitement of receiving the gospel and then going our own way, but to be constantly looking out for the return of the bridegroom, for the return of the king. Personal preparations cannot be based on someone else's life or someone else's uh, preparations. It has to be your own walk with the Lord. There is no such thing as instant discipleship or instant maturation in the fullness of the kingdom of God. We have to be prepared, spending time with Him, nurturing our love, knowing Him, and always the lookout of life is for the return of Jesus. Jesus, your bridegroom, your King. When the bridegroom comes back, there is no time to wait for those who lack oil to get more. And if they have to go away, the door will be closed upon them. Are you looking forward to God's return? When reality strikes, it might be too late. Once the, door, the master has returned, the door of grace might be irrecoverably closed. Keep watch and be prepared because you do not know the day or the hour of his return the word of god tells us he will come at a time that is unexpected the parable of the talents in matthew 25 14 to 30 tells us we have we may have five two or one talents the question is this what do you do with all these resources these gifts of time uh, these different giftings and opportunities that god has placed into your hand god has entrusted these precious resources into your hand do you put them to use for the master's course or do you spend time, waste time away in your personal pursuits and forgot the course of the master? Life as a disciple is not only about not sinning against God. Life as a, as a disciple is also about doing good because to, do, to know what is good and not to do it is also a sin. Michael 6, 8 tells us, He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the God? This talks about our dealings with people, to deal in matters righteously and justly, to show mercy because mercy triumphs over judgment. And to be humble before our God and never to be self-reliant but always giving thanks with gratitude in our hearts for all that is given to you and all this to do with people and be stand before him. When Jesus comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory, the glory that is beyond our possible imaginations on earth. When he comes, he would set the sheep on his right and the goats on his left and he will be judging. Matthew 25, 34, 36 tells us, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Who are those that God has placed along in your life that you could reach out to? Who are those in need that you could care for and show the love of God? Jesus himself identifies with those who are suffering. And even especially so in this time of pandemics, when we know that there are so many job lost and there are so many suffering and in fear, in sicknesses. It is the time to show the love of God to those whom God has placed in your way. Jesus expects his disciples to reach out to them for his sake. 
Because he said in his word, whatever you did for the least of these brothers of his, you did it for Jesus. And the, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do it for the Lord. As I come to a conclusion, I really believe that God is calling us to keep watch and be prepared for His return. The Spirit of God is really speaking to His people all across the world to watch out for signs of His return, to wake up and not be slumbered. This pandemic should really cause you to pause and to examine your walk with the Lord. Are you like the bride who is constantly looking out for the day of the wedding where the, where the bridegroom will come, our King of Kings, Jesus? Or one that has forgotten that you have been betrothed and your, your heart is preoccupied with the pursuits of this earth? Keep watch and be prepared. Be ready for the Master's coming because God is coming back very quickly. He is coming at a time that is unexpected. Though the trials will increase and there will be sounds of issues across this world, but God says do not be troubled by them because He has overcome the world. Do not be alarmed, but endure and set your heart steadfast on the Lord. Keep your love. Do not abandon your first love, but keep the flame of love for the Lord burning, burning, burning till you see Him again. You must, let's keep watch and be prepared for His return, for God is coming soon. At this time, let me bless you in, in the name of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.